All right, thanks, Lee. Um, as Lee mentioned, I'll move this a little back. <laughs> Actually, I don't usually use a use a speaker system because I'm so loud. My uh, my fellow board members tell me all the time. So, um, I am David Kissinger. Um, I want to speak to you about uh, some of the work that we've done. I honestly, I hadn't considered us to be a, a large you know a large effort, but I know we've been doing it quite a while. So I, I was real impressed with what you had to say, Lee. Um, Ohio Healthcare Information Technology Day is one of our main events. Um, I oh. Slip this slide in, Tammy. You, you tricked me. Okay, so uh, I am the president currently of uh, CSO Hems. I'm on the advisory board for Northern Ohio Hems. Uh, was recently asked to join Jeff's team on the public policy committee, regional vice president for uh, innovative consulting uh, group, and a past candidate for state representative. So I have some, I think, some unique insight uh, because I actually tried to get in these offices that. Uh, you know that these folks are uh, you know representing us at so I, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the great state of Ohio obviously you're here so you love the state already I know uh, but uh, Ohio is made up of uh, 33 Senate districts um, and 99 House districts uh, so we have representatives in each of those areas both senators and the House of Representatives um, we uh, have been meeting in Columbus in the State House uh, for about seven or eight years now. Uh, Rick Moore was kind of the one of the hard chargers that led the way in establishing a lot of the work in the great state of Ohio as it uh, comes to um, advocacy. And, you know, I've really just kind of come alongside him and the rest of our board to try to assist and support them uh, with the efforts. We currently, um, the, the legislator is a part time. Uh, legislator, they get almost 70 grand a year to be part time. Can you believe that? Who wants that job, right? Nobody? Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, so, ooh, did I touch that? Okay. Um, so, um, so part time, 70 grand a year. Um, they meet through December, and quite frankly, it's one of the best part time schedules I've ever seen. I mean, literally, they like, you know, to collect 70 grand to do that, I mean, yeah, it's hard work, but man, every holiday they get two weeks off, you know, before a week, after a week, I mean, it's awesome. So you can see why I wanted to be in the state legislator, right? Because it's way better than working every day as a sales guy. Um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> moving right along. Um, so our objectives uh, for our state health IT day, I wanted to just speak to kind of what we were trying to do and how we went about it. Um, our objectives were, of course, to increase awareness of the benefits of health information technology. Uh, the, a lot of the state legislators don't really deal with the minutia of, number one, health care, and certainly not the further minutia of information technology, right? So it's really incumbent on us as experts in these areas, and if you're in the field, you may not consider yourself an expert, but the reality is each one of us in this room are experts in healthcare information technology certainly in comparison to the state legislators, either in the House or the Senate. So we have a unique insight that we can provide to them. And so really that's one of our main objectives, is to give them a piece and really key components of the information that we have, the insight that we have, so that we can advance healthcare information technology in the state. Uh, also, it's important for us, and what we <coughs> made as one of our objectives as well, is to introduce uh, prominent members of the state healthcare information technology community to state legislators and their staff. So in essence, that's you. You know, each one of us, you know, getting face to face with the state legislators is really important. Relationships are the key, and I'm gonna go into more of that on how you build relationships shortly. Um, and then of course, to establish the HIMSS chapters and, and others as valuable resources in the development of state healthcare IT policy. A lot of times, states, state legislators do not have expertise in these areas. You're like, what is going on? <laughs> I am, I'm, it's my magnetic personality, right? Uh, so a lot of times, they don't have any expertise. They go out into the community. They ask, you know, who in the world knows anything about this computer stuff in healthcare, right? Well, if you've had a relationship, if you've made a connection with someone in West Virginia or someone in, you know, Texas, you know, you've now become their, one of their first calls. You're on their Rolodex, you're going to get a call from them, they're going to say, hey, 
Jim, you know, I need some help with this. What can you do to help me? Because I, we've got this bill coming through and we need to understand what's important to the healthcare IT community. Um, so, you know, here's a picture of us meeting with the legislators and staff. So this is really one of the key components. And one of the things to remember is sometimes you end up, I'm not gonna touch anything over here. Uh, sometimes you end up meeting with the staff. You know, we set up these meetings. You're not always able to meet with the senator or the representative. Sometimes you, you have your meetings on days when they're not in session. And so they may not come down to the state house. You know, that's fine. The staff actually is a very valuable resource, both at the state level and also at the federal level, frankly, too. Um, because these are the people who actually move the legislation through the process and are very important. It's good to de develop relationships with them. So this is a picture of uh, one of our meetings we had just in this past April, uh, you know, meeting that we had. Um, and then one of the great things uh, that comes out of these relationships, this is uh, my good friend, Representative Barbara Sears. You also see uh, our good friend Paul from uh, Northern Ohio Hymns and another lady that uh, joined us, uh, you know, at the State House as well. So these relationships are long term. When you meet a state representative, let's say you meet her, you know, him or her in your local community. They could be shopping or whatever, or you might r run into them at a fundraiser or heck, you may you may uh, not necessarily support them in every way, uh, but, but when you make that connection with them, it's important to remember that it's not just that day or that moment. When you go down and, and meet in your state capitol, it's about a relationship. And what we've been able to do in Ohio, uh, with Representative Sears specifically, is we've been able to develop a relationship with her that really allows her to have us as a resource for you know, the past several years. Initially, what we started out by doing was just uh, you know, letting her know what healthcare IT was about. And it turns out that she ended up in a leadership position shortly after that. So that gave us the access to her that allowed us to be able to promote healthcare information technology and bring those things to light for her. Um, things which she wouldn't have been able to know otherwise. So we started out um, you know, asking her to attend the uh, the, you know, the local events in the state. Then what we had the opportunity to do last year through uh, you know, the public policy committee was to invite her, and every state legislator has this opportunity, either House, Senate, whatever, you can invite them to come to HIMSS, and they can actually attend for free. Who doesn't like free? Everybody likes free, right? So this is a great tool to get people from your state in the legislative process to the HIMSS events. Now what that was able to do, she came early and of course, as uh, Jeff mentioned, there's several things that happen at those meetings where they have a, a dinner, you know, a legislative uh, breakfast. There's, thing, there's an agenda for them to participate in. And when they come, they get an insight into what we do in healthcare IT that they would never have otherwise. So it's a really great event, a really great opportunity. They're coming to National HIMSS and uh, as, you know, as Lee found, it's also good for them because it helps give them extra points to win that award that, uh, that your, rep, your state senator won uh, for the great state of Hawaii, I believe. So those are good things uh, for them. It helps them understand what we do. Another thing that we did, and, uh, and I, I really like your, uh, your, 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 your award that you, I forget what that, what was that, uh, the, the Davies Award? Yeah, so that was very good. Well, one of the things we did was uh, we had a governor's resolution, and um, our team decided that we wanted to get the governor there. Well, it turns out the governor can't do everything you want him to do, unless you're in a, a Hawaii, you know, <laughs> then you can get the governor. In Ohio, we had a little challenge. But what the governor was willing to do was, and this happened a few years ago, was willing to do a resolution. And so you can see here, this is the governor's resolution. We did that, I think, in 2012, 2013, and 2014. Um, and once you get a resolution from the governor, you can also do this from the state representatives uh, or, how, or Senate as well. So it doesn't have to just be from the governor. Once you get a resolution, it's easier to get them in subsequent years because you've already got a precedent for that. So this resolution was really cool, um, you know, and basically the content of it isn't, isn't something necessarily that you have to derive other than declaring, the governor declared, uh, the April 3rd date of 2014 as Ohio Healthcare Information Technology Day. 
So we use that in our press releases to say, hey, the governor of the great state of Ohio has declared this to be Ohio Healthcare Information Technology Day. So it's really cool, and we've done it every year since. So even though we lost not getting the governor to speak, he was willing to give us a resolution, which we were also able to use positively. Uh, the next thing is, you're right here, of course, in the Global Center for Health Innovation, and everyone took the tour upstairs, you know, went up to the fourth floor. This may look familiar. It's actually our live remote. We had a live feed from Columbus up to here for some people that couldn't make it. And that was broadcast over the internet as well. So there were people that were able to see what was going on live in the State House all day through this live feed that came up here to the HIMSS uh, Innovation Center. So think about those kind of things. You can do it over Skype. We used a firm to kind of do that. You know, it was a little bit of cost, but I think it was well worth it. So think about those kind of creative things where you can engage people remotely, even if they can't come to the location. Let's say they live in a, you know, part of Texas or, you know, part of, uh, you, know, you know, the Northeast where they can't travel to wherever you're going to meet at. You know, it's a great way to engage people. And also, we have considered having uh, representatives actually do live remote uh, teleconferences with their constituents. So think of those kind of things creatively. I think that there's a lot of opportunity around that using Skype and other remote technology. Um, you, here's a picture of some of the technology. You see in the background here, we have, uh, you, you see that live health there, it says in the back. That was actually a telehealth uh, presentation uh, you know, booth that was set up um, you know, by a telehealth company, uh, obviously called Life Health Online. Um, and then in the foreground here, you see some of the technology that we use to do our live remote. So think about these kind of things. They're great opportunities to bring and engage people in the technology itself. Um, one of the people we had this year was Senator Shannon Jones. Um, and we have found a creative way to get them to show up. Um, and Senator Jones, she's a great lady. Uh, what, what I did, I usually go in in the first of the year, because our meeting is in April. Um, I go in around the January time frame and just start you know, walking around in, the, in the, either the House or Senate chambers where you can walk where the public's allowed. And I'll ask, you know, hey, who's doing health stuff these days? You know, who's got some health bills that are coming along? Turns out Senator Shannon Jones was one of the co-sponsors of a major bill. And, uh, and so I got connected with her. I said, hey, you know, we'd love to have you speak at our conference, you know, coming up here. And it's going to be right here in the atrium, which is in the area between the House and the Senate. And so she actually agreed. She's the chair of the Medicaid and Health and Human Services Committee. She actually agreed at that time, early in January, to come speak to our group. So then what we did was uh, we gave her an award as the Senate State Legislator of the Year. And this is a really neat thing because one thing that, uh, that politicians really like, it's applause, right? <laughs> so we gave her applause. We gave her an award. And that really cemented that relationship. And we've done it a couple years. So what I would say is, as you're thinking of how do you get people who are senators or representatives to show up to your meetings, it's really likely.